What do blacksmiths need? They definitely need an anvil, and we got some beat up anvils. Yeah. We're gonna repair this thing is freaking toast. We're gonna be using this Volt that runs off of four DeWalt batteries. <laughs> batteries. And we're gonna also be using the Rebel ACDC 205. We're gonna be both welding at the same time. So. Tag team this anvil, knock it out, burn it up. We'll put a nice finish with some pearl abrasives. This thing's gonna beautiful. Just because this thing's a big hunk of raw iron steel doesn't mean it doesn't need any prep. We've got to prep this thing first. We're using some Pearl Flextron discs. They really go really well as to not dish out any metal. They kind of curve to the contour of the metal. So we got to get this anvil nice and ground down. We want it shiny. Any chips or fractures, we want to grind into them and make everything nice and smooth so that we have a good prep for all the rods that we're about to burn and weld onto it. How much more grinding we got? We got a lot. Got a lot. Got a lot of hogging left to do. Okay, we think we got a lot of these pearls. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pearl. <laughs> One really cool thing that you can tell about what type of metal that you might be working with is the grind test. You'll see all the grinding sparks that are coming off of Bose grinder. The amount of bursts and long streaks tells you the kind of the amount of carbon content in that steel or in that iron. The more bursty that it is, the higher carbon. The shorter it is, the higher carbon. We got a lot of bursts. This is some higher carbon steel, but it's not quite the hardest thing that you'll ever meet. We still want a little bit of bounce to this anvil. Oh my God. Golly. When will it end? Dude, it's just still there. Oh, it's getting smaller. It's getting, oh my God, it's so deep right there. Dude, so much in there, it just keeps going, dude. We're gonna get to the digging. I do that little light grind so that you don't put so much heat and you can still see it. So you still see that crack right there? That's all they get for free, bro. I'm not digging anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna have to just do a whole new anvil at this point. I always bite off more than I can chew. <laughs> we got the heel of this anvil, still has chipping on the backside here and here. We've almost got everything nice and smoothed up. Got a little bit more grinding to do and then we can preheat and weld. Golly. Yeah, that's so bad. It's so much metal we gotta put there. So that's the first thing we're gonna do is try to get these edges, you know, filled back in. This side's obviously not so bad. Just a little bit of deformation. Yeah. We got a ton of welding to do. Oh man, we're turning up the heat in this tent for sure. We gotta get this whole piece of steel and iron at at least 350 to start welding on. Can't weld on this material cold. You'll have a lot more issues down the road as far as cracking right behind your weld. So we gotta get this thing super hot. We got an anvil on top of an anvil. So we're gonna be being here for a minute just to get this to temperature. We got us a paint pin here. It's only a, not a paint pin, but a temperature stick. It's only 300 degrees. We gotta get it to at least 350. And so basically we'll know if it's hot, if this thing is just smoking when we touch it. Not even close. You see that pink mark? That's how you know if we've got this thing to only 300 degrees and it's not even close to smoking or nothing. The top of it, no problem, still well under. This heel is what's gonna get hot first, so we wanna focus on the body. But this heel, we don't wanna overheat and it's still not even close. We gotta keep going. We're gonna be using this Renegade Volt today by Aesop. It's a stick pig machine, so we're gonna be running these duty rods from Aesop as well. You can set your hot start, you can set your arc force with this. Runs off of four D-Wall batteries, and if you got four to the side charging, you'll stay steady welding. This thing doesn't drop in amperage, it only cuts off when it's dead. And it'll let you know it's got a display up here that says how much percentage your battery is left, and it just cuts right off when it's done. Swap batteries, you just keep welding, guys. It's pretty cool. Esau Renegade Bolt, one of a kind. So we see now that it's starting to smoke, okay? That's a good indication that we're getting up to 300 degrees, but it's still not like 
We only got a 300 degree temp stick. We got to be at least 350. That's good. Down here, that body is, you see how it's going clear? We got 300 degrees right there. 300 degrees. But we need to be about 350. I want to see it like whoo, smoke off. Now that that sucker is nice and hot, we can get to welding. We'll crank these welders on. We're going to start with the 2110 Studi rod to do all the build up. We'll get everything nice and built up on these sides first and then try to get that centered a little bit filled in with a couple layers of these rods. It's going to take some welding. We want to make sure we're monitoring the temperature the whole time. And then once we get it nice and mostly flat, we'll go in with these Studi 1104s for that higher Rockwell. Rockwell is how you measure a hardness. And we're looking at about 45 Rockwell here and about 52 when we get finished up as welded with these Studi rides. So let's crank it on and get blazing. We got JD from Apex Welding here. We're gonna do clean him up a nice pretty spot to test out this bolt. Give her hell. Go just a little faster. What you think? That's a very nice machine to roll out. That was a lot of rods. That was a lot of rods. That was a lot of rods. We still got more welding, but what we have even more of is, a is lot grinding. Of grinding. Yeah. We're gonna use a ton of different pearl abrasives. We're gonna start with the grinding discs. We're just gonna get everything back and even shape it right. Make sure that it's nice and flat, and then we have to do some more welding. Yep. And make sure we get those 1104s so it has a nice hard top, and then we can do some more grinding. And, <laughs> and then and some more welding. God, just some more grinding. All right, let's do it. All right. Well, it's the morning of day two. We've just about got all the buildup done. It's, well, I'd say it's done. That's as much buildup and as much grinding as I'm getting. It's, it's got a little wave to it. It's not quite flat everywhere, but we're gonna hopefully correct a little bit of these issues with this hard facing rod. We're gonna switch to the Studio 1104, just keep burning some iron, and we're gonna continue this process of welding and grinding. Yep, just rinse and repeat. Here we go again. Yeah. We got our judge Craig here from the Barefoot Forge, named obviously for the flops. He's also a phenomenal blacksmith and he's gonna give us a critical judging of this anvil. So this is a uh, 1850s era Peter Wright anvil. This was a hand forged anvil built in Dudley, England. And this anvil, when this was made, steel cost more than sterling silver. So there was only a thin steel plate on top. That was worn off and you guys added steel on top. The best way to test that is rebound. Rebound is the measure of uh, the kinetic energy not absorbed by a surface. So if I was to drop a steel ball from a height of 10 inches onto any surface, the number of inches it bounces is the percentage of energy not absorbed by that surface. So let's see, that's about 10 inches. Ooh. Ooh. That's not too bad. That's hey, good. That out. We're finding all the good spots right now. Yeah, the that oh, was, there, there we go. That's a, that's a little bit dead. So right there, there's less hardened steel. There's less hardened steel. Or for whatever reason, the heat treatment has changed at that point. I know you guys basically got bored adding rods to this, but in theory, <laughs> a, a good plan would have been to do about two more passes yeah. and build that steel face up more. To do it properly, there'd probably be a heat treatment procedure. Well, I asked you so. to bring me an anvil I could fix in five hours. <laughs> that was way more than five hours. The thing that's and it important, was a lot with the grinding. Yeah, the thing that's important about that is that I didn't want to do it. 
And I, I therefore put no effort into figuring out how long it would take. You also brought me another one that oh, yeah, that's not going to happen. We're not, not doing two? Not this, not oh, this weekend. Next year. Okay, that's fine. Next year we're going to come back and we're going to do it in one day. That sounds like a smarter plan. Yeah. What if we got bigger rods? Could we then do yeah, less we could passes? Do it like that. So we just need more amps and bigger rods next year and just zip zap it. You know? Zip zap, we got a plan for next year, man. And we're excited to be here at Makers Camp this year and next year and many years to come. Dude, this is the community. This is a really great vibe. We've had a great time this week. Awesome, right? you guys did a great job restoring this. This is gonna be a great anvil in great shape for some beginner. And this is gonna make the difference of someone starting out. This is going to give them the tool that they need to, to do this. Excellent. You can too. You, you can, can too. too.